In this video, we'll talk about when to reject and when to fail to reject a null hypothesis. So, here's our overview. We have three different tests we have to look at. The first approach is the classical approach. So, if your test statistic falls within the critical region, that's our shaded part, that's when we reject the null hypothesis. So, if you have a two-tailed test, if your test statistic falls on the left side over here, or on the right side over here, you will reject. If it falls anywhere in the center between those two critical values, that's when you fail to reject. If your test statistic falls on the right-hand side in this shaded area, then you would reject. If your test statistic falls for a left tail test on the left, that's when you reject. If we're looking at the p-value approach, the p-value, if the p-value is smaller than alpha, then we reject. So your p-value is the probability of getting a sample as extreme as the one that we found in our experiment, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. So if that probability is very small of getting our sample, that means we have to reject the null hypothesis. Alpha is our significance level. So it's the probability of making a type 1 error. We set this depending upon how severe is it for us making an error. And type 1 error just means we reject the null hypothesis when we weren't supposed to. That value is actually true. The third method is the confidence interval approach. If our confidence interval does not contain the population parameter, p or mu, depending on if it's proportions or means, then we reject the null hypothesis. So our first example, we're looking at a left tail test. This is a proportion problem. So first thing we want to do if we're doing the classical approach is to find our critical value. So with proportions, we always use invert norm to find our critical value. Invert norm, we're looking for area to the left. Your area is alpha. And this is a standard normal distribution. So our mean is zero, our standard deviation is one. So our critical value is negative 1.64 on this left tail test. So on the left-hand side, if our test statistic falls over here, we're going to reject. If our test statistic is greater than a negative 1.64, if it's anywhere on the right-hand side, then we fail to reject. So now we need to find our test statistic. For proportions, we use one prop Z test. P sub zero, we get that from our null hypothesis. That's our population proportion. X is 138, N is 250. Here we have a left tail test because our alternative hypothesis is less than 0.6. So once we calculate, these are our results. Our test statistic is that top line. Z is equal to negative 1.549. If we're placing that number on the number line, that would come before the negative 1.64. So that is in our fail to reject region. That test statistic, negative 1.54, is greater than our critical value. So if you have a hard time with negatives, the left is the smaller number. So our critical value at negative 1.64 is smaller than our test statistic at negative 1.5. So in conclusion, since our test statistic does not fall within the critical region, that shaded part, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. That means there's insufficient evidence to say that the population proportion is less than 0.6. When we're doing our interpretation, you're always referring that to the alternative hypothesis. So let's look at an example with a right tail test. Here we have a psychologist with a random sample of 20. He gives mothers the ability to play Mozart 30 minutes a day until they have their child. Five years later, the IQ test is administered. What we know is that IQs are normally distributed with a mean of 100. So our null hypothesis is the mean is 100. And what we want to know is, is there evidence that the child children have higher IQs? So our alternative hypothesis is mu is greater than 100. So since we're dealing with means, we use invert T to find the critical value. Invert T takes our area to the left in our degrees of freedom. Here, since this is a right tail test, that means 5% of our area is to the right, 
So we need to find what the area is to the left, so we do 1 minus 0 0.05. So when we do inverse T of 0.95, our degrees of freedom is 1 minus, our sample size minus 1. So we have a random sample of 20, we subtracted 1, so that gives us 19. So our critical value is 1.73. Since this is a right tail test, our shading is to the right. So if our test statistic falls over here to the right, if our test statistic is greater than 1.73, then we reject. If our test statistic is less than 1.73, we fail to reject. So with means, we use it because we do not know our standard deviation and our sample size is small. So under t-test, we're using stats because we have the summaries. Mu sub zero, we have that from our null hypothesis, 100. Sample mean, from our sample of 20, we have 104.2. Our standard deviation is 14.7. And our sample size is 20. Our test, we want to know, is it greater than 100? And here are our results. Our test statistic, T is equal to 1.28. So we place that on the number line, that will be here. So our test statistic is not within that rejection region. It's not in the shaded area. So that means we fail to reject. There is not sufficient evidence, or you can say there's insufficient evidence, to say that the IQs of babies born to mothers who listen to Mozart is higher. Once again, we're always comparing our statements with the alternative hypothesis. If we have a two-tailed test, very similar, except now what we have to do is take alpha and divide it by two because you have area on the left and on the right. So alpha is 0 0.05, we divide it by two to get 0 0.025. So there's 0 0.025 to the left, 0 0.025 to the right. We're using inverse T because this is a mean problem. Area to the left, 0 0.025, degrees of freedom, sample size minus 1. So we have a negative 2.09 and a positive 2.09 for a two-tailed test. So if our test statistic ends up either on the left, smaller than negative 2.09, or greater than 2.09, that's when we reject. If our test statistic is between these two values, that's when we fail to reject. So t-test, same information, we just change to not equal to for the two-tailed test. Here is our test statistic, 1.277, and we are in the fail to reject section. Our test is smaller than 2.09. So there's insufficient evidence to say there's a difference in the IQ scores of babies who listen to Mozart. So, p-value, two-tail approach, same thing, except now we look at the line below our test statistic. And our p-value, we're looking for if it is smaller than alpha. If it is, we reject. Our p-value is 0.22, and that is actually greater than alpha. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There's insufficient evidence to say that children have different IQs. So we have the same answer using the p-value and using the classical method, and your results are always going to be the same. So for our last one, if we're using confidence intervals, this only applies to two-tailed tests. So our confidence interval contains our mean of 100. So Confidence interval means we use t-interval, stats, we enter the information from our sample, and we picked 0.95 because alpha is 0.05. So 95% of our data is going to be within these boundaries, 5% of our data is outside of the boundaries. Here is our confidence interval, and since our confidence interval contains 100, the mean of the population, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We do not have enough evidence to say that the IQ scores are different. So in summary, classical approach, if your test statistic falls in the shaded area, that critical region, we reject. If the p-value is smaller than alpha, then you reject. If your confidence interval does not contain the population parameter, then you reject.